Hey everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarian, and the king of the multiverse, Rich Stamboli. I am him. the king of the multiverse, and keep in mind that I have traveled oceans of time to find you. Okay, I was talking to my wife about this. My wife, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't, I can't not do it. You can't not do it. It's like, once you hear somebody do it once, it's stuck. Mm -hmm. If you could go back to any era to live a weekend, right? Mm -hmm. You get to pick a time frame in history, any time frame in history. You get to go back for one week. And you get to take back all, and you go there with all the knowledge that you possess, uh -huh. and you could come back with the knowledge that you get from that time. Okay. What era do you go to? Pre I'm going to preface this answer by: Am I protected from murder? It, it, like, oh, like, like witches? Like anything? Like someone's going to think you're a warlock? Disease? No, 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 no. There's oh, no protection. Really? You're, you're you're dropped in that time frame. Uh, I don't know. You know, that's like past era. Past era. One week. Yeah, you can't go in the future. You go I've, in the past. Uh, there's there's two. One, I would love to have been around, not during the Dark Ages, but like definitely in Scotland at some point, you know, where everything was just lush and beautiful. Okay. And have like a little hobbit like, house like, somewhere. Okay, like in the Middle Ages? Yeah, something like that. And the other one is uh, colonial times, just to see what Manhattan Island looked like before it was covered in buildings okay. and brutal architecture. Yeah. You know? Very uh, nice. What like about like what, what, what time frame? I don't know. You know what? Like, I'm a, I'm a big. Uh, I I would I want to say like right after the uh, like the Dutch arrived. No, 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 no. Like right after the American Revolution. Right after we win the independence. Okay. Like the first. Like everybody's very high on USA. Okay. Like the George okay. Washington presidency. We beat the British. Like we're all cool. And I just want to see like that stuff unfold. You know. Also, you yeah. know, I wouldn't mind uh, seeing the Jesus stuff. So. A lot of oh, you want to go back to Jesus? Yeah, like that, like era, like that era. You know, okay. but again, I yeah. feel like I wouldn't. People always say, yeah. "Oh, I was born too late" or whatever. Yeah, listen, I would love to go back to the I old west. I was born too soon. I would love to go back to the old west. Okay, I'd get murdered. Everybody yeah, would get yeah, murdered yeah, yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. What about you? Like, um, first of all, uh, I love that we're doing the Joe Rogan experience right now. Do you uh -huh. want to get my Joe Rogan impersonation? Yes. Go. You ready for this? Go for it, dude. Jamie, you want to give me my alpha brain? Oh boy. <laughs> I've been doing that all morning randomly to people. Give me the alpha brain. <laughs> hey, Jamie. Uh, I, I, I said this to Jess last night. I mm -hmm. would probably want to go back to like 1910s New York to Ooh, see what okay. that's like. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to live like a week in like hippie 60s. I think you'd survive better in hippie 60s. If you showed up in 1910 New York. Oh, they're hanging me you'd by my ankles. No, you'd immediately be put to work in a mine. <laughs> like what? What is he? What are you? What, yeah. what am I? Yeah, I'm definitely working on like like a, the railroad, or they're putting me in a mine. You're gonna put in a mine. Yeah. So uh, that that's uh, I always think about that. What yeah. era would I go back to? Yeah, same here, guys. This is a show all about professional wrestling and time travel. I'm Andrew Zarian, of course, and Rich is with me every single week. We do the show 10:30 East every week on mm -hmm. Thursdays. Generally, every week on Thursdays, we're also doing a whole bunch of other stuff like. Uh, we're on Twitch right now on the F4W page. I'm hosting Wrestling Observer live on Sundays. We're doing an hour to two hours, depending on the week. Also, we're live, pal. Rich is doing Behind the Counter 2.0 and your film podcast. Yes, Film Class Zeroes with uh, my buddy Alex. It's, gonna, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, we're very busy. And this is a morning show. We're going to get wacky on this morning show. We're going to be taking your phone calls, and we're going to have bizarre celebrity guests and do blind item celebrity uh, <laughs> gossip stories here. Chauncey Hayden calling in with his blind item. We have to fill up 10 hours every day. <laughs> That's what Dave told me. He was like, you people don't believe me hours. also. I, I've been telling people this, that Dave made me, like when you meet Dave Meltzer for the first time, you got to kiss his bicep and he just pumps it really hard like this and you just kiss the bicep. Nobody believes me that this is a fact. He also... Ask Brian Alvarez. He also quickly, after he shakes your hand, he quickly he quickly uh, pulls you in, takes out a little dagger and cuts you on the wrist. Yeah, yeah, That's how you get initiated. <laughs> That's when you know you've been Meltzered. Uh, so listen, a lot going on here mm -hmm. uh, in wrestling. What a week it was. Obviously, we had full gear on Sunday, fantastic pay-per-view. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the early buy rate numbers that are coming in. Uh, very surprised. I think a lot of people were very surprised by this. There was a lot of people online that were going based on the Google trends and predicting that this may be the lowest ordered AEW. I have no idea where people got that from. Uh, but the paper did very mm -hmm. well. We'll go into that, obviously, and and going into Brian Danielson as a number one contender, Britt Baker. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot of moving parts here. Well, let's begin with Sunday, yeah, uh, yeah. Saturday, yeah. I should say. Uh, full gear, 
I don't want to do a whole recap. I've done it like 15 times. You guys have heard us do a recap. We've done a post show. Yeah. Uh, I talked about an observer live. I talked about it on we're live, pal. Mm. I am all full geared out, but you burnt out on full gear. A lot of the um, the fallout is fascinating from this. So for a couple of weeks now, we've been talking about how Kenny Omega's shoulders are really bad. He also has a hernia injury, yeah. a really bad hernia injury. Um, they set it up where he's going away for a little bit. Right? Did you watch his chiropractor video? Uh, can I tell you that mm-hmm. guy, that chiropractor? I don't know him. Yeah. Okay. I've seen some of his videos. <laughs> I don't know him. Have you seen his videos? No. He's very like. He's aggressive. It, it, well, the whole like thing is like very clickbaity with like the hot models. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Where like it's like an ass, and it's like he's like cracking her, but like his hands are like on her ass. So like, listen, I'm not, I'm not saying anything nefarious is going on, but mm. he's very smart with the way he's doing his clickbait. Uh, and Kenny, Kenny mm. went to him. So apparently yeah, yeah. he's a very good chiropractor. Yeah. Um, Kenny looked like he was miserable in that entire video, getting his back, like his neck fixed. Yeah. Yeah. And you could just see how, like, I got back problems. Yeah. You kind of seize up like this. Yeah. yeah. When, like just to prevent the pain. And that's how he was the entire video. And I watched that right before full gear mm-hmm. and I was watching it with Jess is also, wh- who is Jess to me? Jess is. Your wife. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and she was like, oh, yeah, like he's suffering here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we find out, you know, and Dave uh, on on, uh, on Wrestling Observer Live with me mentioned this. And I, I think we've mentioned it. And it's been it's been not a secret, like a like a really well kept secret. But yeah. a lot of people knew that this was the moment he would take some time off. Uh, obviously, originally, the plan was for full uh, was for all out. Right. But his title swap to happen. Uh, they didn't do it, obviously, for um, Hangman's wife was pregnant, then mm-hmm. do any day, and they thought, let's delay it, which I think was a was a great thing that they did, because it made more sense on this show. Mm-hmm. I don't think it would have... it That show, that all-out show was so packed, it didn't need that match. And I think Christian and uh, and Kenny did a decent job at, at as a filler match. You know, oh, right yeah, there. yeah, for sure. So, we now have Adam Page, the AEW World Champion. Well-deserved. Uh, Kenny is gone. He's going away. They teased an Adam Cole thing. Very, very, like, I, it reminded me of Sean going away. It's very subtle. Very subtly done, right? Well, because also, in not to skip ahead, but on Dynamite last night, Kenny goes, I didn't watch it back. He didn't watch the match back, which means he didn't see the Bucks not help him. Oh, he didn't watch it back. Oh, right. interesting. So now that he has time off. So it's kind of that weird setup. And also, like, he cut off Adam Cole on last night's promo also so very interesting you know and i do like how since the inception of all these dudes in wrestling they're at, at one point they all get very sneaky sneaky with each other like yeah. kayfabe style yeah yeah, you know? yeah yeah i thought it was great i thought that was really cool how they did it um yeah. but kenny's going away and he's going to be gone for a little bit so i asked okay. around about this cool um there's no set time frame right uh, because yeah. they don't know what they're going to have to fix mm-hmm. so until they go in but the uh, i mean the smart bet is I wouldn't imagine you're not going to see him wrestle till February ish. Uh, yeah. You like know? I would say like a like couple of months at least. Right. Because, you know, he seems like the type of guy that if you give him like a month off, he'll come back like way better than ever. No, he, he needs more than he needs a couple of months. To but you know what I'm saying? Because like, the hernia is bad. Yeah. That, that's a really uh, that's very painful. And the shoulders mm-hmm. are really painful. Uh, if he has to get surgery. They won't know until the surgery is done, but mm-hmm. I think this is good. This is a great time for him to go away. They've kind of set up so many different pieces where Kenny Omega does not need to be on TV every week. Right, right. Kenny oh. Omega doesn't need to be there right now because you have not you know, Danielson, Punk. A lot of guys. Uh, Hangman. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. Everybody. Uh, also, guys, uh, feel free to super chat us. We're going to take your questions at the end of the show. Uh, thank you very much for the couple of guys who already did it. Uh, you can super chat us any amount. We'll take your questions first, and then you know we're going to do a nice Q and A at the end. Yes. Um. So, full gear aftermath. Obviously, Britt Baker retained. Mm. Lucha Bros retained. Uh, Hank, uh, Danielson is the number one contender. Adam Page is the world champion. Every every match was fantastic. Every match was fantastic. That I I got. I'm, I really want to see what Dave did to start writing because we were talking about that and he he mentioned that he had eight matches that were four plus. Wow. And out of 10 matches on the card. I don't know if I had four matches, but uh, eight matches. Mm-hmm. But I got to tell you, man, it was freaking fantastic. Uh, Can I ask very you something? Show. Yeah. Is Dave going to give you the star power? Uh, I, I need to talk to him about that. Yeah. But it's like a whole like 
thing that we do. Can you say like, listen, I don't want your stars, but you're I in want cloaks. something else. You're in cloaks. Oh, you, what, are, what are you guys like? Okay. Uh, like druids? And, and you just touch your hands. Oh, boy. And he passes the power. That's how Brian got the Observer Show. Oh, yeah. Brian's <laughs> been initiated in. I'm just uh -huh. waiting for my turn now. Okay. Yeah, it's very, it's very spooky. Very, very spooky. It sounds very spooky. It's uh, like... Uh, yeah. Let's uh, let's go into Dynamite, and then yes. we'll go into NXT and everything else happening. Survivor Series, Please. obviously. Big news at the end. I'll save it there. Uh, Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks and Adam Cole opened up the show. Uh, this is uh, this was his send-off. He needs more time to go, you know, to heal up, and he needs mm -hmm. some time to reflect. Uh, he said he hadn't seen a match, like you said, so he didn't see the Bucks not helping him, but right. he will see it. Right? Yeah. Uh, you also have uh, the Hangman... Page championship celebration, which I enjoyed. Brian Danielson comes out. This dude, so good. He can. Uh, it's a rare talent where you can go from the most beloved persona in wrestling to the most vile in an instant. In an instant, yeah. When was the last time you heard him get such natural booze? Was it the vegan stuff with the, the belt? Probably the vegan stuff. Uh, so you know what's funny is that mm. he came out. No one could. By the way, Moxley was supposed to be in this spot. Moxley was winning this tournament. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you could kind of see with the setup, you know, Moxley was having a character shift. Right. And this would have been his heel turn. Right, right, right. Uh, it would have culminated at 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 this pay per view where he turned, and mm -hmm. I, I guess they would have. I don't know how the match was going to end, but I guess he would have turned fully mm -hmm. at, during the match. Come out, cut the promo on Hangman, cut a similar heel promo on Hangman. Mm. You could have even done the same exact promo. Exactly. Where he was dubbed when he won the title in WWE and all this stuff. Mm. Um I, I think Danielson did a great job filling that spot. And yeah. um he got boot for WrestleMania. The name dropping WrestleMania, this guy gets booed out of the building, and also like he got booed the almost the entirety of that Evil Uno match, man. Like hardcore angry wrestler Daniel Bryan is where the money is. Yeah, I always like him as a heel. He's Bryan a Danielson. fantastic. He's a fantastic heel. Yes. Uh, I I just like selfishly. I like seeing him as a babyface. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, this also like heel Daniel Bryan and the possibility of heel CM Punk teaming up to be like the most dominant vile tag team makes me very giddy. Interesting. I, I'm I'm almost certain we're gonna see that tag team in AEW. I think it, it has to happen. It has to happen. Put the well, belts on him. Well, know. even even you could do like that's the beginning of their story because we've yeah. never seen that match like done right properly. Right. We saw the <laughs> we saw it wasn't title versus title, but they were both the champions and they they faced each other at one point. What it was, year was that? Twenty? Oh my god! Twelve? Twenty eleven? I want to say it was 2012, 2011 at like Fastlane. It was something. I don't know what it was like a it was Throw like away. a yeah and I thought the match was great but there was nothing at stake mm -hmm. and you were wondering like okay you finally got to see this happen and and it wasn't you know fantastic yeah I mean it was great for what it was but now you get to see like a very different version of it and I think people mm -hmm. are going to be excited for sure uh, Danielson defeated Evil Uno and then we got Tomohiro Ishii Rick so so effing good <laughs> the crowd really didn't know much about him uh -huh. i think if they were at like a pay-per-view crowd or they were like in a major market crowd i think it would have been a very different reaction but uh, -huh. uh he won them over by the end of the match which was really cool mm -hmm. to see orange cassidy and tomohiro ishii with best friends rocky romero friend of the show mm -hmm. defeated the butcher and the blade with matt hardy and the bunny uh what did you think of this fun match i loved seeing ishii i feel you know how we always talk about how bobby lashley's lashley is from like a planet of stone men yes I think uh, Tomohiro Ishii is from another dimension of ass kicking stone men. <laughs> you that, think they're like rival like tribes? I think on the they're stone they're planet? they're rival uh, interdimensional beings. And yeah, you know, Ishii like, Ishii's nuts, man. That guy's so great. He looked great, but you know what's fascinating? Like on New Japan TV, mm -hmm. he looks so much bigger. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, listen, he wasn't in the ring with like. I mean, I guess the Butcher's a big dude. Butcher and Blade are both tall guys. Yeah. Uh, but he looked smaller compared to them, mm. and he has that like stiffness now. Yeah, you know, like I feel like it's the style that they wrestle. Like Muda has the same stiffness, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like a lot. Um, uh, uh, Naito has like that yes. stiffness also. I think it's just the style that kind mm. of after doing it so many years, that's what happens. But he looked fantastic, man. Really cool to see, and I like that they've adapted this New Japan thing very much, like you know, peak WCW, where you would randomly see like yeah. you know Tenzan. With the come out with the IWGP title or mm -hmm. Scott Norton 
Yeah. As the IWGP champion. This is the big tease for Okada, man. Like, how long are they going to tease this out? This think? is going to go on for a while, and I don't think that they should give this away now. I, I think right now the story that they're doing, and uh -huh. we'll, 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 we'll see it, is really that next generation of stars. I agree with that. MJF, I'm... Dante Martin, yes. uh, the acclaimed, I would add them in that. Jungle Boy, uh, Jungle Darby. Jungle Boy, Darby, uh, um, uh, Sammy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, they have a couple more, obviously. The but this Pillars. Is, these are these really are the pillars, and they're telling you they are. Yes. And you know who else? Daniel Garcia. Oh yeah, hundred percent. All right. Very very Which interesting we'll talk guy. About in a little bit. Um, I got a question for you. Yes, sir. Do you think there's going to be some sort of AEW presence at Wrestle Kingdom? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. Um, it. Did I melt your brain? No, I want. I want. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to like. I don't want this to become like Andrew Zarian said that it's happening. Okay. Okay. Um, I would say when I asked about this. A few months ago, mm -hmm. I was told that a lot of this depends on obviously the pandemic and obviously uh, J Japanese tourism and, and allowing talent to come mm -hmm. in. I would say no now. Okay. But that's not a, I, I don't, I can't predict how, how, you know, how this, this whole thing is going to go. With the with with opening up Japan and uh, tourism coming in and people coming in, I don't I can't I don't know because they're being very conservative over there. Yes, with this, so I would say that if things were fine now, mm -hmm. like if if things were okay now, I would say that there's a tremendous chance. Yes, but I don't think there's going to be a lot of international travel to Japan this year. That's an interesting. I again, if the travel stuff opens, I'm going to say a hundred. I'm going to say not a hundred percent yes, but I'm going to say yes. Because a lot of the guys on the AEW roster have that yeah. unfinished business in Japan. Also, January 8th is a big show, and I don't think that they're going to be, you know, they want to... That's right. Back yeah, and forth. Battle right. of the belts. So that that also plays a part in this. But I had heard so much a few months ago mm -hmm. when, prior to the Olympics, yeah, right? Because they shut everything down around that. Uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I'm Very good question, though. Thanks, what else Andrew. do we have, Rich? Thanks, Andrew. Um, so we also got Nyla Rose beating uh, Hikaru Shida. Uh, in the TBS Championship Tournament. That's a lot of fun. Um, and then you got an MJF promo interrupted by CM Punk. Yes. Punk comes out. But wait, look, wait before that, uh -huh. MJF's whole thing is, my contract ends in two years. Right. You know, like, really well done. Yes. And think about it. You know, we, we heard the boos for mm -hmm. WrestleMania, and we got the boos here, too. And he's such a good That's heel it. to make yeah. you dude. And you know what? I have to tell you. If he continues this and he does happen to jump, I think it's a great get for WWE. That's hysterical. Right? It'd be funny if he was just like telling the truth. I told you guys I'm leaving. Yeah. And, yeah. He, could, and he could cut this great promo about this, mm -hmm. this second rate organization that doesn't deserve him because he's a star. It's very good. I mean, just think. I I get it. It's a character and some of it people take very personally. Yeah. 100%. It's so tribal. But yes. what a fantastic story to, to be able to do. That during that promo, I immediately thought of the pop he would get for a Royal Rumble. Oh, if MJF came out, yeah. So yeah. you know, Punk comes out, MJF takes a deep breath. He goes, uh, "Nice to meet you, Maxwell, or whatever." Punk disparagingly looks at his, the handshake and walks away. Great job, great, great yeah. job. Uh, now, what's interesting is like folks on on the socials were saying like, "Oh, this is genius because." Eddie Kingston interrupts Punk. Punk takes that, goes, gets so pissed off, and then they have this crazy fight. Yeah. Now Punk does the same thing to MJF. Yeah. Um, I think this is a great build if you want to wait till the January show. What are we, six weeks away? Yeah. What are I, we, yeah, is it six weeks? No, more, well, than, more that. than that. More than that. Do you think, because people have been clamoring for MJF promo versus Punk promo. That's why they didn't talk. Do you think... It's going to be the swerve of Punk doing that Jericho thing from a few years ago, not saying anything, and letting MJF run his mouth. Um, you know what? That would be great if they did that. I forgot they did that. That wasn't that Jericho. That was Jericho's thing. It was a few weeks of Jericho just showing up, shaking his head, and then leaving. And people were so upset over oh, yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. When he came, when they, when he debuted as like a fired up baby face and wouldn't say anything and just leave. So who did he feud with right after that? I didn't want to say. I didn't want to say it was punk. Was it punk? I think. <laughs> I, think so. I think you're right. Yeah. Uh, Leo Rush and Dante Martin versus the acclaimed Max Caster and Anthony Bones. This was a fun match. Yeah, very fun match. These guys are great. Um, these guys are definitely like one of those uh, AEW pillars. You know, all four of these guys. I think. I think Leo Rush has adapted extremely well. Um, 
But the real story is Taz keeps trying to recruit Dante Martin for hey, Team Dante, Taz. Hey, Dante, why don't you come join us? I'm a businessman. You're a businessman. Let's all be businessmen on top of each other. <laughs> Business. Uh, <laughs> which I think is kind of funny. Yeah, fantastic. T- Team Taz, the Taz stuff hovers on the serious and the wacky. Hook reminds me of Intern Deacon a little bit. I could see that. Yeah. I could see that. Uh, and then main event, TNT Championship, Sam Rivera. B- Jay Lethal. Jay Lethal. Yeah. Um, you match. made a big mistake of of ma- mentioning his name and the bots <laughs> saying Jay attacked Lethal. you. Saying, uh-oh. Yeah, you said Jay Lethal, mm-hmm. and that was it. Uh, fantastic match. Listen, Jay Lethal is a great pro wrestler. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, he came up in an era that was really, like, WWE was so dominant with what they were doing. I don't... Mm-hmm. I think that they had offered him a couple times. Remember that there was a rumor that he may go to NXT at the peak of NXT to kind of yeah, be yeah. another piece in that puzzle. Um, I thought they had a fantastic main event match. Oh, yeah. Uh, great highlight for Sammy again. And again, you could see, look how they're positioning people here, right? Uh, everybody is positioned in a way that's mm-hmm. kind of making sense yes. for growth Absolutely. in those characters. And they're... You know, one thing you gotta you gotta give Tony Khan credit to. I mean, there's many things. Is that he's now you know year two. We've hit year two of this company. We've had two years of building your established talent. Yes. Now it's time to build everybody else. Absolutely. He's got. He plays very well in the sandbox that he's building. You know. I I, I have to tell you that I'm I'm enjoying the booking. Uh, Same here. AW Rampage lineup: Darby Allen versus Billy Gunn. I know yes. you're very excited about this. Anything Billy Gunn, I get excited about. Why did Why did Billy's kid look at him and say, "I like turtles" randomly? Because he looks like the turtle he's kid. He's a turtle kid. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was uh, that was it was out of nowhere. Great, it was great, and it was done very well. So we're gonna get a, a 18 foot Billy Gunn <laughs> against a four foot Darby <laughs> Allen. Billy Gunn is essentially Galactus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's <laughs> he's transcended into something else. TBS Championship Tournament. Uh, women's tournament, uh, Jade Cardgill and Red Velvet, and mm-hmm. Jurassic Express versus Adam Cole and Bobby Fish. Where's Marco? I don't know where Marco is. He is he hurt, or is he just... No, I, I I, think... Did Christian eat him? Christian ate him. <laughs> he consumed him. That's how he keeps his youth. Uh, and then we have AW Dynamite on 1124. By the way, this will most likely... Next week's Dynamite will most likely be the lowest rated or l- l- lowest viewed Dynamite mm-hmm. of the year. Uh, we saw that last year. The last two years, it does terrible. Yeah. Uh, Thanksgiving Eve is a huge night to go out for the youth. The youth. The youth. It's the. It's what the, it's is a youth? The biggest drinking night. Biggest drinking night. At least in the states. Yeah. Right? I got into a lot of trouble one time when I was twenty-one years old. I took a beer bottle and I threw it. Mm-hmm. And it just so happened landed in front of a cop. Ooh. And you know what I did? I ran. Uh huh. Did they catch you? I ran for the yeah. They caught me, and he said, "Don't ever do that again." That's nice. He he, he just he liked the chase because I was like laughing and like I was like I was an asshole, total asshole, like twenty year old. Like I was yeah, like yeah. I I wasn't like laughing at him, but like I yeah, ran right. <laughs> and I was like, okay, okay, I'm sorry, you know, I didn't mean to, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and he was like, "Don't ever do that again." He goes, "I have so much headaches today." I get a, you know, I got a, I got a quick funny story about that. I was in New Orleans a few years ago for a bachelor party. One of the guys we were with got into an argument with the cops and threw his beer his beer can right in front of them, like slammed yeah. it to the ground. Me and my buddy were in the restaurant watching this happen. And we were like, yo, Benny's going to get shot right now. <laughs> and all the cop did was, Hey, can you chill? Yeah. Can you chill out a minute? And sent him on his way. And I'm like, you know, these new Orleans guys probably have so much more to worry about yeah. than a drunk redneck throwing a, a bottle. That's pretty them. much, that's pretty much what they deal with regularly. <laughs> uh, Danielson versus Colt Cabana in Chicago next week. Okay. Pretty cool. Fun. Okay. Uh, which I think what they're doing now is that he's going to go through all of the Dark Order. Yes. that That's the plan here. Uh, TBS Championship Tournament, Thunder Rosa and Jamie Hayter. Great. Lucha Brothers. Lucha Bros. Lucha Brothers. Lucha Bros. Uh, Cody mm-hmm. and Pac versus uh, Andrade, Malachi Black, and FTR. Uh, some of the rumors. What happened? Let's talk about this. Yeah. In that, in that Lucha versus FTR match. That finish, remember we said it was wonky. Yeah. Well, it was wonky because who got knocked out? Who was the one that got knocked out? Was it Dash or Dax? Who got knocked out? Somebody in the chat room. No, no, nah, I'm sorry. I was just thinking of the wrong dude. Um, did Pac get knocked out? No, no, no. Uh, after one of the after FTR one of FTR right. got knocked. I can't remember. God, I'm so sorry. Um, uh, they got knocked out, mm-hmm. and Dax got knocked out. No, I was right. And there was 
there's a root there's a story that hmm. there was a lot of heat on him for getting knocked no, out. No, not on him. <laughs> on uh on uh on Lucha Bros mm. because they didn't check on him. Oh, uh, okay. Ray Phoenix didn't check on him. Mm. So there was something listen, it happens. And you know, I asked about this and the answer was like, yeah, you know, listen, people people were hot, like you you normally check on the person, but you're in the moment and sometimes mm. like this it's it's such a high stress thing. Right. If you think about it, mm -hmm. you're in this match. You need to do a phenomenal five star match. You know, that's the, what these guys goal is. Uh, there's so many moving parts. There's time cues, there's spots. You, sometimes you just lose your. You, you, you just get lost in a moment. Yeah. And that's how it was described to me that, you know, it's not gr good to do that, but mm -hmm. you got lost in a moment. So I don't know if that's the excuse, if that's the reason. I have no idea, but that's what it was yeah. said to me. All right. You want to talk about NXT? We'll do uh, some NXT highlights. Very low rated, lowest rated NXT ever. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What, what was it competing with? Uh, there was a lot of competition. There was a lot of sports on. So, but sports. you know, when I've spoken to to those guys at NBC, mm -hmm. they have always said that they're 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 not disappointed in the ratings. They understand it's a new product and it's a rebuilding product, but they want to be in the sixes, mm -hmm. like the mid sixes. They're comfortable there. This was five seventy five or five seventy something. And we're starting to see maybe a little drop in this. So I don't know. Hopefully they'll they'll rebound next week. Yeah. But did you? What did you think of the uh, that that Steiner promo? I, the Champa uh, Champa doing Steiner man. Yeah. That's fine. You know, like I, as a fan, I'm like, oh man, the writing's on the wall for this guy's title run. Uh, Braun Breaker's definitely taking that belt at some point. Why not just call him Braun Steiner? Why not just call him a Steiner at this point? Well, why not call Joe Hennig Joe Hennig and not uh, Curtis Axel? You know, why not call uh, but, but you Bray know, Wyatt uh, Wyndham Rotunda? But they never, but they never, they never alluded that he was a Rotunda, right? They never, they never did that he was a Wyndham or a Rotunda. They never. It took Joe Henning. It was it was Paul Heyman that that yeah. brought up the fact that his father's a great, and then he became, uh, you know, he he was he, his father was a great IC champion, and when he had the IC run, so they don't acknowledge it when they change it, but. All they're doing is acknowledging the Steiner stuff now. What was uh Rex Steiner? It's easy. It is easy. What is uh what was um Curtis Axel's first name? Was it like Sean McGillicuddy or Jet McGillicuddy or something like that? Uh it was it was McGillicuddy. Yeah, and then they went to uh Curtis Axel. He's still around, right? So after Kurt Henning and Axel and uh Larry the Axe. Right. Henning. Yeah. Very uh Michael McGillicuddy. Michael McGillicuddy. Why? Go. But why? Jet McGillicuddy. That Jet McGillicuddy. That's a good like, one. Guys, like you could it. feel free to take that name if you want to start wrestling on the Indies. Yeah. And his middle name is <laughs> Curtis, so there you go. All right. Yeah, uh, Raquel Gonzalez beating Dakota Kai via disqualification. Toxic attraction attack Gonzalez. Yo Shirai and Cora Jade made the save. Huge setup for war games. Huge setup for I yeah, think Yo yeah. Shirai yelled out war games at the end of at, yeah. <laughs> uh Monday Night Raw. 1.58 million viewers. Mm. The whole show was setting up the feuds for Survivor Series, pretty much. That was the entire thing. SmackDown did 2.1 million. The highlight was Roman crowning himself king. So a lot of interesting <laughs> stuff now going into Survivor Series. I can tell you I that it. this was not the original concept for Survivor Series. Okay. Okay, months ago. Okay. A lot of stuff changed. Sure. Obviously, the NXT stuff played a factor in this. The releases, the mm -hmm. last set of releases played a huge part in this. This was not the original story of this pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. You also have to remember, this is the 25th anniversary of The Rock, right? Yes. You're also in Brooklyn. Yes. This isn't some middle-of-the-town city that you're running Survivor Series in. You're in a major market. New York, Chicago, Philly, Boston, LA, you know, major major cities for WWE to be in for a pay-per-view. Yeah. What we've gotten is a just the basics pay-per-view. Listen, isn't that the trend with WWE? Well, just the basics. You know, I got to, you know, I talk to them regularly over yeah, there. Yeah, I know. And they're not stupid. Right. Like, they're not like, I, I think people have this idea that they're blinded mm. by the fact that they're WWE and they don't recognize some of this. Um, I can tell you, mm. they, they know when things aren't good and they know when things are, are good. I, they're very much aware of this, but 
the promotion for this pay-per-view has been fascinating. The uh, Roman Reigns was on Jimmy Fallon last night, and Jimmy Fallon mm. was asked them about the rumors of The Rock on Sunday. Okay. Wow. That, by the way, I mean that that's pretty cool. For me. It, it is you pretty know? cool. Like yeah. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Dwayne. Um. They brought it up. So they are bringing up The Rock a lot. And The Rock did an interview and he said, yeah, I, I beat up Roman Reigns. Mm. <laughs> right? Like they, they've been uh -huh. alluding at this. Yes, yes, yes. Says he would love to face him in a match. They don't do this. And Jimmy Fallon's not going to ask him this question without WWE PR. Right. You know, like it, it, I, I think people, these shows are all very set up. Yes. You do pre-screenings before. So you sit there with... Mm. Literally, you, you sit there with, like, a producer, and they ask you the questions that he's going to ask. Yeah. And they, like, kind of prepare you for everything. Uh, you know, to bring up The Rock so many times, why would you do that and leave people disappointed? Exactly. Exactly. Unless and their whole thing is that this whole freaking Rock thing fell apart, and they're literally telling you The Rock will not be there because they don't want the disappointment of teasing it. That could also mm -hmm. be it. But, you know, looking at this card, I mean, there is room for something. Absolutely. I'm not saying The Rock's going to show up. I mean, I did yeah. say that that was the plan. I, I, I mean, that was 100% an accurate report. That was the mm -hmm. plan. A lot of things change, but let's see what happens now. Because yes. everybody's gotten very quiet about this. Yeah. But also, you know, give it up for that, uh, that neuroscience uh, PR that WWE has where it's like every two seconds, they'll say, Rock, The Rock, The Rock, Dwayne The Rock, The Rock. And like they're Pat Lovie and... Uh, uh, conditioning and at the same time they're telling you he's not going to be there but they're also saying the world oh, what about the rock what about the rock the rock 25 years the rock huh the rock the rock and the rock just got a new movie out yeah red notice and he, and young rock got renewed for a second season young rock as a fun show yeah. young rock got renewed and also this dude said he wants to play uh, james bond which i disagree with Dwayne playing Dr james bond i completely disagree with that that would be really weird it huh? would be nuts he'd be like you know, like those Schwarzenegger movies where you see him and he's like a handyman or like a, he's, yeah. a, he's like a construction worker yeah, yeah, yeah. and like he's 25 feet tall. <laughs> he's such he's such a uh, like an unbasic man to do a basic job for Schwarzenegger. Yeah. But I mean, being being a secret spy for Dwayne. Same thing with The Rock. He just know? stands out. Like, how do you how do you hide? True Lies worked for Schwarzenegger. True Lies did work for him. Right. That Jamie I, Lee Curtis dance is so awkward. Does it make you uncomfortable? It makes me so uncomfortable. I was like, I was like, why is somebody's mom in a thong dancing? Now you that's the day to day of your life right now. That's the day in my, yeah, that is the day to day of my life right now. <laughs> but the rock, the rock of James Bond does not work, man. This yeah. guy can cannot fit in anywhere. Um you know what I want the rock to be? And he would probably make it a uh, tequila drink instead of a uh Oh yeah, yeah. A martini. Yeah, yeah that, that would be the product placement there. You know what I want to see him as? A Terminator. Yes. Remake the Terminator as Dwayne as Terminator. Dwayne at Dwayne the Terminator Johnson? Yeah, but he has to do the Arnold accent. Oh, that would be great. The whole time. Or Eraser. Remake Eraser with Dwayne Johnson. I love that. Very cool. So, listen. Uh, we're going to find out Sunday. But there's a couple things here that they've been doing. Uh, let's go down this card really quickly. I'm not sure if we're doing a watch along because it's my wife's birthday weekend. I don't know if I'm going to have family over. Do you mind if I tell you on Saturday? You know what? Like, I'm also leaning towards no just because it's Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah. You know? Well, pre before. What do you mean? Survivor Series this Sunday. No. Yes. Is it? Yes. Oh, boy. Yeah. I thought it was next weekend. No. This Sunday. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little weird. All right. See? We'll, Nobody knew. We'll figure and that out. That's a problem. We'll figure this out. Yeah. We'll figure this out. Five on five Survivor Series elimination match. Mm -hmm. Team Raw, Seth Rollins, Finn Balor, Kevin Owens, Bobby Lashley, and Austin Theory. <clears throat> I, I don't know. I, th I think they're going to dump him out. I think so. Yeah. Uh, versus Team SmackDown, Drew McIntyre, Jeff Hardy, King Woods, uh, Happy Corbin, and Turnbuckle Dan. Turnbuckle Dan, baby. <laughs> Who do you think is Turnbuckle Dan? James Ellsworth. James Ellsworth, he's back. Uh, I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot for the stars on this one. Braun Strowman. Oh, you are shooting for the stars on that return, one. like a, a weird no. return. No, I don't know. We'll find okay. out. Uh, five on five. I would love that though. Yeah. Just randomly comes out. He has a whole different look. He's a blonde. Mm. He's a blonde babe. No beard. No beard. Just a blonde long, babe. Long blonde hair. Yeah, I'm into that. <laughs> uh, five on five. Women's Survivor Series elimination. Team Raws. Bianca Belair, Rhea Ripley, Liv Morgan, Carmella, and Queen Zelina. Beautiful. Team SmackDown. Sasha Banks, Shayna Baszler, Shotzi, Natty, and Turnbuckle Danny. Turnbuckle Dana. 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 <laughs> Turnbuckle Dana. Uh, that these. That's a good five on five. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know what? Very evenly matched. I yes. like that team. Uh, I think last year was very one-sided. I forgot what it was. Yeah, the yeah, women's yeah. match. And it, sure. I think we, we commented, like, why is one side so much stronger than the other? Mm. Uh, Raw women's champion, Becky Lynch versus SmackDown women's champion, Charlotte Flair. Mm. This has gotten into the carniest of carny stories. Oh, for sure. All right. So now let's let's talk about this. Let's do it. Um, the story is that they've had problems for a couple of years now. Right. And that the story came out that Charlotte has isolated herself in that locker room from all the other women. Mm -hmm. Coincidentally enough, the couple days prior, the story was that Charlotte was so upset that she didn't drop the title mm -hmm. to Bianca Belair. Charlotte had wanted to drop the title. Uh -huh. So. Listen, these I'm not saying I'm not saying WWE contacts people to tell these stories. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that that's the case here. Right, but, right, right. you know, that is how most television brands operate. Right. Most sporting companies operate. That the PR, there, there's people within PR and they, they talk about stories. I'm not saying that's what they did. But if that is not what they did, this is the most organically natural story that they've been able to tell. Yes. Like, and it's like unbelievable how things fell into place here for this match and the timing. Absolutely. This, um, that reminds me of yeah. uh, the whole pre-Ronda Rousey where Nia Jax called her out on the red carpet and people didn't know if it was real or not. Okay. Or when Becky Lynch got punched and broke her nose or yeah. whatever happened to her nose. She got the bloody nose. That's a happy accident. Three. Yeah, but it was, you know, they, they kind of turned it into a shoot and mm -hmm. it was a work. And that was the beginning of Becky, you know? Yeah. So they do this title swap. That segment goes absolutely bonkers because Charlotte doesn't want to freaking do it because she recognized how stupid it is, which it is stupid, that title exchange. It goes haywire. They throw the belts at each other. You know what? It made people think, right? So I asked WWE. The answer to me was very simple. It was, hey, people are talking about it, aren't they? And that, got, that, that turned the light bulb on in my head. Yeah. That's been yeah. very dimly lit. <laughs> okay it just all of a sudden came on and i go uh, huh that's a very interesting answer huh huh i turned into bob brutal <laughs> bob huh uh i and now that they're feuding and they're having this match you yeah. know if if you believe that these two individuals hate each other that much this match would not be happening right it, but that's great for the fans it's great for the fans now rick flair's involved talking you know crap about becky becky talks about rick talking about he's this sad little man uh -huh. the sad pathetic legend that made bad decisions in his life and that's why he's in a position he's in yeah you know i mean that's a quite a hurtful thing to say about him about the 16 time about, uh, about the 16 time world champion you yeah. know like and she was very it wasn't a becky lynch promo she was very um like humming and humming a humming a little bit in that interview okay i you know, whatever it is, it's got me interested in this match. Absolutely. And unfortunately, this is the only match I'm really invested in right now. You're not invested in uh, WWE champion Big E versus Universal champion Roman Reigns? I mean, because I know what the re end result is. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, listen, unless something happens at the end, mm -hmm. which is cool, but I'm not saying anything. But I don't know. Like, is that is they haven't really done anything to make me invested in that. It almost feels like it's like, oh, it's a champion versus champion and that's all you get. Like, I don't feel as invested, and I feel that's such a detriment to Big E, mm -hmm. because they, they, they could have done more with this. Yeah. Um, Do you think they're ever going to go back to the well with the S.H.I.E.L.D. stuff, with just Roman and Seth? I feel like we will get a reunion one day, of all three. The three, like, yeah. the three guys. Yeah. yeah. You don't think they're going to do a, a replacement, like a swap? I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't put it past WWE. I wouldn't either. Uh, Raw Tag Team Championship, RK Bros versus SmackDown Tag Team Champions, the Usos. All, All right. right, cool. Yeah. And uh, United States Champion Damian Priest versus Intercontinental Champion Shinsuke Nakamura. I'm actually interested in this. Same here. I'm very much looking forward to that. But where match. the hell has Priest been? Partying, dude. He's partying in Puerto Rico. He's partying, man. He's partying hard. Partying with one of our friends. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, Survivor Series. Let's talk about. Um, mm. Let's talk about this a little bit more. I, I'm going to give WWE benefit of the doubt here. Okay. Right. When, when the bar is set very low mm -hmm. for these shows, they have a blockbuster show. I think this oh, is going to be a really fun show. Yes. I think it's going to be a great show. Like it don't, don't think I'm saying it's not a good show. I, I'm almost certain it's going to be a very mm -hmm. good show. Uh, I'll agree with that. I'll agree with that. But like we were talking about zero build, 
Very, yeah, zero built. Zero stakes, right? Isn't that one of the central ideas of Survivor Series? Brand supremacy, that's the stake. You have to survive, right? Like, that was like the original Hell in a Cell exclamation, right? Well, what if I get four guys and see you at Survivor Series? You know, now it's like, I'll fight you in Hell in a Cell, right? Yeah. There's no, there's nothing there. Um, do you think it's lost? It's, it's shine. I don't know. Like, I, I think they need to. I, I thought they had their shine. I, I think mm. the last couple of years of Survivor Series has been fantastic. Mm. You got to see matches that you never imagined, right? You got to see a Shinsuke Nakamura in the ring with Triple H. Yes. That was a big deal. 100%. Uh, yeah. Like, the fact that they did something, it's, it's a bizarre. Um, mm. It's a bizarre matchup that. <laughs> If you're a pure wrestling fan, you never really envisioned you would see a Shinsuke Nakamura and a Triple H in a ring together. Exactly. A uh, Keith Lee and Roman Reigns. Another exactly. Another really cool moment. That's what made, mm. and they 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 got it. They got it. Yes. When and and the title and the champion versus champion thing, they got it. And, but it you have to sell it as it meaning something. Right. Well, I think we're we're talking about this as a whole. As a whole, yeah. Not this year specifically, but as a whole. You know, like this was supposed to be like the fourth mega pay per view, right? And for the last couple of years, it really hasn't been sold as this mega pay per view. Is that an archaic idea at this point? Is there is that just not it? Well, I, I think a lot of it also has to do with the fact that they're no longer a pay per view, right? These are these are network specials. These are Peacock yeah. specials, and I'll always call it a pay per view. Uh, uh, me too. But yeah. you kind of lose a little bit of the luster mm -hmm. internally. Yeah. When you don't have to convince people to pay a hundred dollars to what or sixty dollars mm -hmm. to buy it, right? When if you know that's at stake, and you're taking people's money like that, you, maybe there's mm -hmm. a little bit more effort put in. Okay, I would think so. Well, here's the thing: as far as the taking people's money thing, I think that also is one of the intrinsic reasons why there's no stakes or no build because that arena is going to be sold out. The merch is going to sell. It's, it, I mean, financially, they're going to do fantastic. Exactly. They always do fantastic. You know, like when we, and, and again, like when we went to SummerSlam, it was ridiculous how much folks were into the entire show and how much merch people were walking out with in that arena. Dude, it was, it was, for all the people that are saying WWE sucks and it's dead, mm -hmm. no guys, way. it's nowhere, it's nowhere near that because the people that are, we are watching it's two different products at this point. Yeah. Right. You are watching something that resembles the wrestling that, and we're, let's talk about mm -hmm. us, right? P ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. P ones, baby. There you go. You're going to fall asleep. P ones. We, we Is that AJ Styles. P one. Um, <laughs> let's talk about us. We are, we are the, the, the infatuated fan. We are the, 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 the super fan of wrestling, yeah, sure. but those aren't the guys that are filling a hundred thousand people in a building. Mm -hmm. Majority of the people that are going to this don't give a shit about AEW versus WWE. Yeah, they're WWE's wrestling to them. That's mm. what they recognize. That's what they've always recognized. Most of these people are casual fans. You, you, you listen. You want to you want to have you want to cater to the hardcore viewer. You got a million people a week, and that's what's happening with Raw right now. The numbers are dwindling. Yeah, but you when you go to these live shows, like I'm taking my kids to the Garden for that Garden show in December. Oh yeah. My kids are not, I mean, you're talking, I'm taking my kids, I'm taking mm -hmm. uh, my wife, say it, Rich. My wife. Thank you. Um, well, we uh, I'm. You know, my father's going to come, you mm -hmm. know, like, these are not people that watch Raw. These are people that, you know, this is a cool event to go to with the kids. You want to see a show. We want to see a show. Let me get out That's of the That's how people are going to these shows. That's, and mm -hmm. listen, we put out that Rey Mysterio tweet. And oh my God. The people that responded, <laughs> it went viral and to a non-story, and yeah. the people that responded were deeply like invested in this story. Yeah, and to us, it's just whatever. But to someone that's been watching wrestling for three years mm. and really doesn't, yes. it's not like an archivist or a tape trader. These are all new things, and you don't know better that mm -hmm. this has been done, or you don't know that it, it's a different way of viewing wrestling. Yeah. And that's what that Survivor, that SummerSlam show was. It was a different way of watching wrestling. You are watching sports entertainment. You're watching, it's a Cirque du Soleil. It's a play. It's Broadway. Yeah. It's it's the circus. 
while going to an AEW show, you're going to a wrestling show. It's more it's more of a very well put together rock concert. Yeah. And, than, and WWE is a, is a is a is a total full on stage production. Oh, a hundred percent. And it, you know what? Like, how many belt guys did we see at SummerSlam? Tremendous. They're taking the plane. With, there were people with, with belts the, on. With the belt. And, you know, as long as, like, I just want to touch on that real yeah, quick, where on. you were like, people are always saying, like, WWE is dead. No way, no how. Like, if you're, if, if people are still dropping 200 bucks for meet and greets and the line is around the block, yeah. They're, they're not doing anything wrong. No, not yeah. at all. No. Listen, they're doing a lot wrong, but well, yeah, they're doing I mean, it for us. They're doing wrong for us. As, as like, the, the type of wrestling fans that we are, yeah. You know, like listen, I still enjoy it and I watch it every week. Like exactly. I, don't, I it, it like I'm able to recognize the things that I don't like, but I'm also able to recognize what's positive that they do. Yeah. And we talk about this every week. Like I don't I don't really have I'm not one sided with any of this. Um so that was what it was. Uh do we have any news that I got that I'm missing here? Any topics before we go into our Q and A? We got about twenty mm-hmm. minutes for the Q and A or fifteen minutes for the Q and A, and I gotta get the hell out of here. He's gotta get the H out. I gotta get the H out. Get the H out. All right. Uh, listen, guys, do us a favor. If you're watching on the F4W feed, do us a favor. Subscribe to our YouTube. We're almost at 6,000 subscribers. YouTube.com slash Podcast. You can also subscribe wherever podcasts are available. Download your favorite podcasting app. Open up your favorite podcasting app and subscribe to us. Uh, we're everywhere. Video, audio, everything that we're doing. Also, uh, we're on Wrestling Observer Live. Mm-hmm. I'm on Wrestling Observer Live. We're on Wrestling Observer, the website. Uh, a lot of cool stuff coming, and by the way, I'm doing some more stuff coming up. A lot of stuff, yeah. And if we don't do, if we don't do a watch along, watch Joel, Joel Pearl's watch along on Fightful. But uh, just curse him out the whole just, time, and tell him that he's canceled constantly. Oh, 100 percent. Good friend, and, good friend of the show. Yeah, yeah, Joel's great. And also, if you want to support us, um, it would be great. Uh, you can check us out on Patreon.com/slash Mattman Podcast. I hear he's a wonderful lover. We got a uh, the jury's out on that. No, I've, I've I, heard I, otherwise. Oh, <laughs> I heard, uh, I heard. Uh, He's uh, he's not a very generous lover. Oh, he's selfish. <laughs> it's all about him. Patreon.com slash Madman Podcast. You can support us there. Um, we have tons of tears and tons of fun stuff on there. We're working on a ton of new stuff for you yeah. guys, too. All right. Q&A time, boys and girls. Submit your questions in the chat room. We'll do our best to answer them as fast as we can. we got about 10 to 12 minutes here. So uh, let's fire up some of these questions. We got a super chat from John Gorman. Five bucks. Thank you, John Gorman. Watching Full Gear to Raw slash NXT just shows... How different AEW and WWE are. Hold on. Are you pushing them on the screen? Wow. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's do that. That's. Hang on one second. There we go. This, that, that messed me up a little sorry. bit, by the way. I'm so it's sorry. okay. All right. Let's do it All one right, more time. There we go. Let's do it. One more time. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, super chat from John Gorman. Five bucks. Thank you, John. Watching full gear to Raw NXT just shows how different AEW and WWE are. Not to sound like a giant AEW mark. But the differences are so obvious. No, absolutely right. And guess what? I had the same. I had the same reaction, but with the New mm. Japan show, I watched Full Gear again on Sunday morning because I had to do the show yeah. on Sunday night, and I tried to watch the New Japan show afterwards, and I couldn't. Mm-hmm. I had, I had I had some difficulty watching it, so I had to like pause <laughs> and watch it on Monday, and I enjoyed it a lot more. I, mm. I really think that you know when you have a blockbuster show like that. Where the matches were fantastic, it's it's difficult to watch a regular television product. Yeah, straight up. Uh, I want to ask everybody too. This is just like a personal thing. Is it weird seeing your little face on the screen now <laughs> when you have your head as your I think avatar? everybody loves it. Uh, we got another one right here from uh, Bob Hazelwood, friend of the show. Five bucks. Do Andrew's eyebrows have a separate contract with the Rex- Wrestling Observer Online? You know, Dave threatened me. And he said that if I don't if I don't hit the numbers that we're supposed to hit, he's total business. Mm. He goes, you lose your eyebrows, man. Shaving them off. He knows that's where the money is. Mm. All right. We got another super chat here from uh, our friend Chris Farrell. Five bucks. They have stated the pillars in the men's division. This is for AEW. Who are the pillars in the women's division? By the way, uh, Chris is a great guy. I've known him for like 10 years. Yeah, good guy. Long time viewer of the show and, 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 and what the tech fan. Um, good insight too very good insight that's a great question uh definitely Britt baker ty conti uh ruby mm-hmm. uh you think ruby i think ruby will be will be a piece um, uh they, they've been a little slower with the women's division but also they didn't really have the uh the top recognizable talent you know Britt baker was unknown to most and she really prospered 
in AW because they they were able to kind of craft her uh, and, and give her this 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 push where she felt comfortable doing. Uh, I think they just need more talent like that, and we're seeing it with Ty Conti. I'm gonna go Britt Baker. Okay, Ty Conti. Uh huh. Hikaru Shida. Okay. And the fourth is gonna hover between Serena Deeb, Thunder Rosa. Oh, Thunder Rosa. That's yeah. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a limb here. I'm gonna say Jade Cargill. Jade Car- Jade Cargill is is gonna be a pillar, and uh, Anna J. And Red Velvet. This Red Velvet. Too. Very, yeah, their divisions. Yeah. It's heating up. It's yeah. getting it's getting better, which I'm happy about. Great question, Chris. Uh, we got another super chat here. Um, it's not going to come up on the screen, though. Okay. Uh, Brandon Charles Powell. Hey, guys. Love the work you do. Keep it up. Do you think Britt drops the title to Thunder Rosa at the next pay-per-view? Uh, at Revolution? Or are we talking at... Um, the January. The January uh, battle. So, little insight on Battle of the Belts. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a one-hour show as of right now. And I- I'm very surprised by that. Mm-hmm. Because... How are you going to fit a one-hour show with your title? I guess you can, right? Three title. How many title defenses? One, two, three, four titles, mm-hmm. right? TBS title, TNT title, world title, tag title. You could do four. Ma- I mean, you could, but it'll be a really tight show. Uh, I would hope that they're going to add another hour to that. I never heard one hour. I think Dave reported the one hour. Yeah. Uh, I, I saw some other people say one-hour show, but you know, you could do it there, or you could do it at Revolution. I think Revolution would be a big thing for them to do. Uh, I'll agree with that. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, we got a we got one. This is going to pop up from our friend uh, Kenzie Abbott. Favorite non wrestling moment, non wrestling wrestling moment this year. Non wrestling wrestling moment. Um, <clears throat> probably Danielson or Punk going AEW. The debuts. The debuts. I'll agree with the debuts. I think Punk's debut and also the. Uh, I really love the MJF Jericho song and dance number, My Shadow and Me. Oh, you love that. I loved it. Fantastic. I could talk about that. I could do a Geek and Destroy on that. I oh, you do, should. I can do 45 minutes Good. on that you easily. Should. You should. Geek and Destroy, a Patreon exclusive for us, by the way. MG Geek does it. Fantastic job. All right. Let's see what we got here. Uh, this is another one from, from my buddy Bob. Where do you think the ROH roster folks end up? Who goes to Impact? Who goes to AEW? Who goes to MLW or other? Uh, I think it's going to be a mixed match. Uh, we see Jay Lethal going to AEW. I think a lot of them want to go to AEW, but like the Briscoes, mm-hmm. I would imagine they're going to end up there. Uh, Sean Ross Sapp, our friend, uh, mm-hmm. reported that they were backstage. I think the Briscoes would, would fit in great over there. They would, they would add another level for sure. All right, we. I I thought the I thought there was going to be a slight invasion last night. Maybe I got my hopes up. Listen, <clears throat> pace it. What if they show up next week? You know, like now now there's like different elements to this. I think yeah. the Briscoes. You know, this is something that we we keep talking about. Somebody asked me on uh, on Observer Live, mm-hmm. who are who are the um, who are the guys that you want to see from that WWE? You know, the the last release. I said, mm-hmm. well, uh, Keith Lee, a hundred percent, right? I would say Keith Lee first, Karrion Cross second. And then wherever, like, I feel like those two would fit in organically. I think for Bray, I think for Wyndham, mm-hmm. they he they have to, he's going to be introduced with some sort of story, right? He's not just going to show up and challenge for a TBS title or TNT title, I should say. Okay. Uh, I, I think though, but I think a Keith Lee could be a great, like, what if Keith Lee comes in and demolishes Sammy and he becomes a TNT t- champion? I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that as a heel. Yeah, or carrying cross as a heel doing it. Um, yeah, you know, again, there's so many different levels as to their release and why they're released and how they got released. So I think those would be the big ones. But I, I definitely, I think the Briscoes would fit in great if they showed up at the tag division. I Just keep, another level. I keep saying it, Brody King. Even Punk mentioned it this week that he wants yeah. Brody King on the roster. Great, yeah, I would love that. Great pick. Uh, we got another one right here. This is a uh, six ninety nine from R J Trumbly. Since you mentioned what the tech, any updates on it returning? So it really has to do with my schedule. I, I you know, it, it's it sucks, but I don't have the days. And I think after, you know, I'm hoping that that changes a little bit. Mm. You know, we're in my we're in the busy season. I thought that we would have be fully staffed. I would have my staff back. I right, haven't brought right, any right. staff back, so I'm like a one man show that's hiring, you know, independent contractors to do everything for mm-hmm. me at this point. So. As soon as I can, I, I want to bring it back because uh, I absolutely love doing the show. 
Uh, this is one from our uh, buddy pal Derek. Huge, huge Matt Riddle fan. Yeah. Did you guys ever tape trade from Memphis Wrestling back in the day? Ever see Lawler get hit by a car? I remember seeing that live on TV. So it was crazy. Did you ever get the Memphis stuff? I I did not. I was more interested in uh, the Japanese stuff. Okay. Uh, me too. 100%. Yeah. Uh, I first started with my first tape. It was like an FMW tape. That's yeah. how I got into it. And then I went down the rabbit hole. But I did, however, see that wacky Vince McMahon stuff from 93 mm. in Memphis. I did see that. Uh, uh, I had my cousin was a tape trader and he brought that over. And I couldn't believe that the WWE announcer was like this heinous man. Right, right, you know, right. Like, right. you never saw Vince in that. And I'm like, oh, it's Vince McMahon. And Macho Man was a heel. Uh-huh. Tatanka was a heel. Like, and I remember, like, he had, like, a couple of those episodes. And I thought, why are, first of all, why are these guys, like, in a warehouse? Yeah. You know, like, that was one thing that I thought. But what was, what was your first tape? Do you remember? Oh, my first, like, it was definitely a Coliseum home video. Like, when I was Deep a throat. kid. Deep Throat? Yeah, it was. Uh, Debbie it Does was, Dallas. It was Debbie Does Dallas. Yeah. It was all the classics. Yeah, all the All classics. the John Holmes stuff. Yeah. Like, ugh. Oh. Um, oh, wait, what are we talking about? Wait a minute. Yeah. Are you talking about cream pies again? Mm. <laughs> Let's get to another question. Yeah. Uh, this is from Twitter. This is from our buddy Matt. Um, let's see. Any news on where the next AEW pay-per-view is? Yes, I knew this, and I don't remember. Okay, uh, fair I'm enough. I'm so sorry, Matt. Uh, somebody had told me this. I cannot remember who. Let me think about it. <laughs> give me give me like a day. I'll, I'll, I'll find an email with it somewhere. Uh, this is from Joe. Do you think Kevin Steen will be in AEW come next year? Um, I don't know, man. You know, he's he's making good money. He's not really. I mean, he's not really. He's in. He's always in a mm-hmm. like a upper mid card or main event position. Yeah. I don't know. I would love to see him in, in AEW. I think yeah. you know he's he's such a talented guy, and he's another one. His style would fit, but. You know, you, you have these, there's so much great talent out there. Who's going to pop those numbers a little bit more? I think that's what AEW is kind of in the position of right now. Mm-hmm. We, we've we seen that, uh, you know, right now because of the West Coast feed being live at 5 p.m., mm-hmm. their numbers have dropped a little bit. They're in the 900s. Um, I, we'll see. Uh, I don't know. Is he, is he, is he, a, is he a needle mover? I, I, I don't know. I think it for for the for the fans, guys like us and the guys who watch our show, yeah, absolutely. Listen, it's, I'm excited for Bobby Fish on TV. That doesn't here. mean that anybody else is. Yeah. I mean, and no, no knock at Bobby Fish. I think he's fantastic, and I love seeing him wrestle. Exactly. And, and I think our audience, I think everybody that watches this, is excited to see Bobby Fish wrestle. Exactly. That we're exactly. getting that undisputed era tag team. You know, it was fun the and way they turn on him. Maybe yes. they turn on him. It was fun the way Adam Cole cut him off too, because he was about to do the uh, the thing. Yeah, the hand sign. Uh, let's see here. Well, this is from Mexican Pissed Head. Would you say Brian was a heel all along since joining AEW? Uh, he's always been, a, he's been aggressive. Mm. I think he's just been a dick and I, I love it. You know? Uh, yeah, that's, that's an interesting insight. Here's another Don 99 from Chris Farrell from the super chat here. Will Tony, will Tony elite hire Dan Housen? Uh, I think Dan Housen was going to get hired. Uh, I think, t- I think Dan Housen's future was very, very like, immediate future was very bright before the injury i think so too i also think that he if they keep if they did that tnt tournament thing he would have showed up he would have showed up but now i feel like that they're putting a lot of seriousness on that tnt title i love that dan housing gimmick i'm so, I'm so into it mm-hmm. it's so stupid uh mg geek our uh, producer extraordinaire this is from uh, twitch uh via radio oddity any news where bandito might end up uh that's a great question. I don't know, but where where do you think he? I know WWE really wanted him at one point, mm-hmm. you know. But I think I think a lot of those, a lot of those dudes, Roosh and Bandito. I think they got the Iggy from from Andrade. Oh yeah. So maybe they're a little bit less uh, into it. Uh, let's take one more question, and then we'll get you out of here. Can, can I tell you what the funniest thing ever was? Sure. When. <laughs> When Del Rio called Triple H a big nose effer, yes, uh, like why? <laughs> Spiteful and dude, you know what? Fall out. from grace, huh? That For guy, real, yeah. you know, Ugh. like he could have been a pillar somewhere. He definitely could have. Um, great body, great look, decent wrestler. Yeah, good promo. I never liked his ankles. 
No. Don't like his ankles. No, you were like, ah, oh, get rid of these get ankles. Get rid of these ankles. Um, I think uh, I think uh, he'll forever be known as Alberto Del Gelo. Um, <laughs> uh, any more questions? Let's do one more. Okay. This is a big one. This is from the Stoner Vet. And uh, I almost lost it. Rich and Andrew, what is your Dream Survivor Series team and why would Enzo be your captain? Okay, Hashtag so. ask Matt Men. Jonathan, uh, Jonathan asked us this question. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's funny that Stoner Vet is also asking it. Uh, I have a dream team. You tell me yours. Uh, Cactus Jack. Uh huh. Eddie Guerrero. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Red and Yellow Hogan. Rounded out by the Macho Man. Okay. Do you remember what mine was? Ahmed Johnson. Ahmed Johnson. Ahmed Johnson. Ahmed Johnson. Ahmed Johnson. Ahmed Johnson. 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 <laughs> I, dude, I loved Ahmed Johnson. I think yours. You said this to me the other day. I think yours was Hollywood Hogan. Yeah. Stunning Steve. No, no, no. I had to take Austin out. Goldberg. Remember? No, no. You had Stunning Steve. Okay. Goldberg. Goldberg. Um, Ahmed Johnson. <laughs> where is that freaking list? Come on, guys. Where Where is the dream team that I had? Yeah. Where's the graphic that? Yeah. That, where the hell's the graphic? Where's the graphic that we made for this? You know, I have a picture of Jonathan and his girlfriend's ass on my on my messages, but yeah. I don't have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need, uh, we need this graphic right now. You know where the graphic is? They mooned me. Can I tell you that? Who mooned you? Jonathan and his girlfriend. What, from a picture from or 20 a years ago? Friend, or a female friend. All they right. sent me a moon photo. There's two. You guys, uh, you guys. Jonathan was wide open. Okay, here we go. You ready? Yeah, I got it. There here it go. is. I got it. My team was. Yours was Eddie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eddie. Macho. Uh, Hogan. Uh, regular Hogan. Red Cactus. Yellow, yeah. And Austin. Yes. Okay. Mine. You ready for this? Go. Bret Hart. Mm-hmm. Goldberg. Yes. Hollywood Hogan. Yes. Superstar Billy Graham. Weird, weird team. And Sandman. <laughs> Most of the people on that te- on your team make me very uncomfortable. Uh, which one? Is it? Is it? Is it the fact that every, it's every, it's Billy, it's Superstar Billy Graham with and Sandman Hogan. and Goldberg? What a team! Ugh. What a fantastic team! I'd walk right out of that room. <laughs> <laughs> like if I walked into a room and I saw those three di- three dudes hanging out, I yeah. just walk right back out. But hang, hangman, uh, hack, mm-hmm. Sandman is in there because somebody got injured. Okay. That's the only reason why. He was Turnbuckle Dan. He was Turnbuckle Dan. Turnbuckle yeah. Hack. Can you imagine? Crowd pops. He comes out with a kendo stick. Bill mm-hmm. Goldberg starts chewing on it. He's one of the biggest people I've ever seen. And, and I envision the entire match to just mm-hmm. be an ego-filled match where Sandman's the only one that's like wanting to win. Everybody else is just giving a shit about what they're getting in. So yeah, yeah. they're just bickering on the apron, and it turns into a pose-off between Goldberg, Hogan, and Superstar. Oh, boy. Like, they're ignoring the match. Bret Hart's getting his ass kicked. Uh, Sandman is de- being demolished by you know whoever you- the other team is, and it's like Hogan's like my biceps are bred- bigger, brother, and they're just feuding over biceps. My Hogan is peak biceps Hogan, so he's got seventy five inch pythons. He's bigger than a bigger than the waist of like a six four person. Yeah, imagine that. Imagine having oh, is it twenty four inch pythons? Twenty four inch pythons. Jeez, it's big. That's the like biggest pythons of them all. The biggest pythons of them all. All right, are we ready? Is We're ready to wrap it, guys. Yeah. I got to run to the train. Uh, I got a quick day at work. I got to take Jess out for her birthday. Uh, who's that again? My wife. There you go. <laughs> uh, I got to take her out for her birthday today, so I'm I'm gonna have a quick in and out of the Manhattan. Um, we may be doing a watch along. I don't know, man. I nothing. Not not against WWE or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I I got a birthday going on, so I don't know. So I'm gonna try my best to put this together. If we do, we do. If we don't, watch the Fightful page because yeah. I think I'm gonna call in. Yeah, let's all call in. Yeah, we should all let's, call in. Let's me and you call in on one line. <laughs> like old, <laughs> like, like three way? Old school three way yeah, call. Yeah, yeah. Like a party line. So oh. we're going to do that. Guys, do me a favor, man. Hit the subscribe button on the Matt Men podcast on YouTube. Love you guys, each and every one of you. The Twitch guys have been fantastic. The F4W guys have been fantastic to us. I'm back this Sunday, Wrestling Observer Live. I believe, actually, Brian's back this Sunday. Oh, not right me. On. Cool. It's Brian's day on. Uh, Brian's going to be back Wrestling Observer Live, one hour show. Maybe I'll join him on a phone call. Maybe nice. I'll do a quick thing with him. You're calling everybody. I'm calling everybody, man. I'm just make, I'm picking up the phone call. and get, Wait till you know who I'm meeting. All right. <laughs> yeah, got, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. got it. Uh, got it. <laughs> so there's a lot going on the next couple of days for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Little inside baseball. I always like to throw at you guys and uh, make you speculate. Uh, Rich, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at BTC Rich on Twitter. And you can find me at Andrew Zarian. Mm-hmm. Matt Pockets on Twitter. Big shout out to our team, uh, the most underappreciated guys in all of podcasting. MG Geek Matt does all of our uh, all of our Patreon stuff, the curates notes. the notes, yeah. curates everything. Love him. 
Uh, Jonathan with all our graphics, mm -hmm. all our social media is run by Jonathan. And of course, Suncast, the guy that runs the entire operation here when it comes to production, uh -huh. in my basement. He's been held captive oh. for 12 years. <laughs> and he's working for nothing, for, mm -hmm. peanuts. Uh, for peanuts. Listen, sunlight. he's a good he's boy. Working for sunlight. He works for sunlight. Suncast works for sunlight. Uh, and that's it, guys. Love all of you. Be strong and God bless. Later. Take care, America.